American pig farmers are working hard to provide safe and nutritious pork for consumers around the globe. Wakefield Pork, based in southern Minnesota, is a great example of the dedication farmers have to the proper care of their animals, best production practices, daily attention to each pig, and a strong veterinary relationship help to ensure each farmer representing the U.S. pork industry is providing the best care possible and in turn supplying consumers with safe, nutritious pork for all to enjoy. In 1977, Mary and I started farming. In 1991, we leased a hog farm in Wakefield Township by Richmond, Minnesota. We started the business and got a name and that's where Wakefield Pork came from. I'm the fifth generation on this farm. I've worked this ground with my dad, with my grandpa. My boys are now coming in the tractor with us in the fall. Working beside my husband and my son and seeing their passion. To be a pig farmer and know that we're feeding the world is an ultimate desire for myself. We raise the corn and soybeans on the land to feed the pigs. The pigs in turn uh, produce pork, which the consumer eats, and the manure they produce provides this fertilizer for the next year's crop, and the cycle goes on and on. Pig farming isn't a job, it's a lifestyle. Caring for the pigs every day throughout holidays, weekends, hot weather, cold weather, we all roll up our sleeves and at the end of the day, it's our job to get the pigs cared for. We have 250 employees and we have 250 contract family farms throughout Minnesota and Iowa that help us raise our animals every day. Wakefield Pork understands that one of the benefits and the enjoyments we have is providing food for people all over the world. And we know that we can provide the safest pork for anybody in the world to eat right here from the Midwest. When I grew up on a farm in Nebraska about 30 years ago, we raised pigs, a lot of them were outdoors, they were all grouped together, but we had tremendous death loss from predators and cold winters, uh, very hot summers, and that has really changed the pork industry to where it is today to have them indoors, to have them protected, to have them feel comfortable, to give them the individual care that they need to be productive and to be treated humanely. Animal well-being is at the center of everything we do as pig farmers. So we start by building a state-of-the-art barn where the pigs are kept warm during the winter and they're cool during the summer. We have automated feed and water systems that keep feed and water available at all times for the pigs. There's a lot of things that we've done to improve the health and the safety of the animals inside the barn. So we give our pigs vaccinations just like you would your children to protect them from diseases. As a veterinarian, I work really hard with farmers in order to keep our pigs healthy. Some of the things we do on the farm is make sure that our animals are well cared for with a proper environment, fresh feed, and water. One of the biggest risks we have is obviously disease, and a lot of those diseases are airborne. And so what we do is we use a filtration system that filters the air before it comes into the barn to make sure that it's uh, clean uh, viruses and bacteria before it comes in. We work very closely with veterinarians to make sure that all antibiotics are used responsibly. We use antibiotics to treat pigs that aren't feeling well, if they're not getting up and eating well. On the farm, we try really hard to reduce the use of antibiotics. Feeding the pigs a balanced diet is key for keeping them healthy and reducing the use of antibiotics. There's a number of practices that we've established from internal audits, external audits, third-party audits to find procedures that we make sure that we're doing well. We want to make sure that your family is as safely protected as our own families. Multi-site production helps the health of the farm primarily because you have the sows or the mother pigs on one specific barn. Within a sow barn, there's really two different departments. One is the gestation and the breeding area, and then another department is the birthing area. After a sow is bred, she gestates for a period of three months, three weeks, three days. And throughout that time, we're ensuring the nutritional needs are met. We're, we're observing her on a daily basis to make sure she's being cared for properly and really doing everything we can to ensure that the pregnancy is successful. We have different systems involved with sow housing, whether they be put into pen gestation, where they have other animals with them, or if they're by themselves. 
Individual housing where the sow has its own individual stall has some advantages and that the person working with them has ability to look at them and give them the individual care that they need. They are fed individually, they're watered individually. The trade-off with individual sow housing is that they don't have as much space to move around as they would have with group housing. Group housing allows the animals to live together with other animals and gives them more space in which to do so. The trade-off with that is that they, there's a pecking order established within that pen. They're a social animal, but there's also dominant animals within that pen. All of the systems work. At the end of the day, what's important is that the sow receives individual care on a daily basis. At about 112 days of her gestation, she is then moved into a farrowing room where she gives birth to her piglets. They'll come into their maternity pens so that we can provide a safe environment for the piglet once it's born, and also we can monitor the sow on an individual basis to ensure that she's doing okay through the, the farrowing process. When the pig is first born, I think the importance of the first 24 to 48 hours is critical and in that pig's life. Uh, we put a lot of attention and a lot of detail with our caretakers to make sure that that pig gets the colostrum and the immunity that it needs from its mother. So ensuring care for those piglets as soon after birth as possible really plays a key role in making sure that those pigs remain healthier throughout their whole life. A baby pig, when it is born, needs a much different environment than its mother does. So we provide a heat lamp and a mat so where the temperature is 90 to 95 degrees where the baby pig wants it. And we also have to provide an environment for the mother who wants it 65, 70 degrees, a much cooler environment. Success on a sow farm, number one, is that our animals are well cared for and also that we have employees that are properly trained and educated about how to care for those animals. Um, and ultimately, at the end of the day, that every pig that we send off of that farm is of the right quality, so that when it does get to the marketplace, that it's safe and nutritious for the consumer at the end of the day. When the piglets are 19 to 21 days of age, they're weaned or removed from their mother and move from that barn onto another farm. A wean to finish barn is a barn where the pigs stay from 12 pounds all the way up to market size. It's about six months. There are many levels of care and observation involved in a wean to finish barn. The first thing we do is we train our growers as caretakers. They go through the Port Quality Assurance Program as well as the Transport Quality Assurance Program and those are designed by the National Pork Board. They're all encompassing of pig farming and so they're very detailed programs and all of our caretakers are certified in both of those programs. Wean to finish pigs stay comfortable, fed and safe through the daily chores that our pig farmers do. The level of care and observation in the wean to finish barns is very high. We do a lot of daily checking, making sure that we're mat feeding and bowling, make sure that the temp in the environment is correct. They're looking at the pigs, observing them for health issues that they might need to be treated for. They're gonna check feed and water. They're gonna check any barn or equipment maintenance things that need to be taken care of. Barns have become technically advanced over the years where we have controllers that run our fan speeds, they run our feed systems and our heaters and we can change our temps. This allows us to give the pigs the best environment no matter the time of the year, 24 hours a day. And then a level above that, we have our veterinarians to advise our caretakers and our growers and help them decide when we need to medicate or how we need to treat pigs, how we can best facilitate their environment in the barn. On a typical visit for me, I would walk through the farm with the farmer and look at the health of the animals. If there's something that doesn't look quite right, we might look a little bit deeper. The biggest three things we look at are feed, water, and air. A measure of success in the Wean to Finish Barn is producing a healthy pig to the consumer and a safe pig to the consumer, while doing it humanely and correctly. Being involved in the pork industry is, is a lot of responsibility in a way. It's a responsibility to earn consumers' trust. Anybody involved in the industry is involved in making sure we have a safe product out every day to the consumer. Family farms are the backbone of the pig industry. We personally work with over 200 farm families in southern Minnesota and northern Iowa. It gives them the opportunity to bring a son or daughter back to the farm and to keep them involved in farming. Small town America is starting to die somewhat. There's a lot of people that are moving out to the bigger cities and we understand that. 
but it's enlightening to see all the young people coming back into egg and wanting to strive to make that product a good product for everybody to consume. Without active communities in rural Minnesota, Minnesota dies. And that's one of the beauties that the pork industry has provided, that we allow people to work on farms, live in the rural communities where they want to live, and prosper with their families.